Hello ladies and gents, Romy Reviews here, please like, comment, subscribe, this is my review for Star, the winter finale, so it's season 3, episode 9. Now, before we get into that, just quick notes, for I've been making this announcement, but starting from 2019, I'm switching things up, I'll be doing a minimum of one video a day which isn't that hard because I actually almost do that already. But I just want, you know, to know whether it's like a hot topics or um, pop culture topic or if it's a TV review or it's, if it's mu music, movies, whatever. I will have something new content-wise on my channel every single day for 2019 unless I am sick. And even then... I really get sick, so it will be every single day. I literally, the only way it wouldn't happen is if I don't have an internet connection. But aside from that, let's go. As well as, my reviews will be up sooner, like how they used to be when I first started YouTube, for those of you, of you that have been with me since the beginning. Thank you for the church announcements. Again, my name is Romy. This is a Romy Review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the star. Season 3. This winter finale, it was good enough. It was good enough. It wasn't bad. <clears throat> it was good enough. Yes. Now, <laughs> we're going to do this based on the individual people. Let's start with Simone. Simone has a little... She has a situation. Angel is back. She loves her husband. She's reconfirmed to her husband. But you know who's gone? Nina. Nina's gone because she decided to dip. She went and left Mateo. I'm thinking, how much money did she take? Because it seems like she's the one that really has the money or at least is um, wouldn't blow all the money. So we have that going on. But Nina dipped. And now Simone's not sure what's going to happen there. Um, so Simone also is dealing with the fact that, I, that Angel... <laughs> He's, you know, in the country illegally, so she's trying to hide him out, but he wants to go and support her like he always has, and that causes an issue, because guess who sees him? Mateo! So then Simone gets concerned, because she has a bad relationship with Mateo, but Mateo lets her know, hey, he also was illegal at one point, so he's not going to go and ever, you know, jeopardize someone's safety or their status here in the U.S. And Simone's going to use him, Mateo, to try and help out Angel to get him citizenship. And, you know, so th that's what's going on there. They also had the movie premiere, which it went it went well enough. We didn't really hear much from that. Um, so actually, Simone didn't have too much going on this episode. Let's talk about Cassie. Because Ca the episode actually starts off with Cassie. Cassie comes over to Carlotta's house. And Carlotta, you know, she's getting the Christmas tree together. And Cassie said, oh, so are we going to do Christmas at my house? Because and Ca Carlotta said, no. No. Why would we do that when you don't know how to make good mac and cheese? Who doesn't know how to make good mac and cheese? Actually, let me stop because I'm pe pe uh, pescatarian and so, but I still know how to make a mac and cheese. I still know how to make good chicken. I still make, know how to make, <sighs> that's not the point, Romy, that is not the point. The point is her mac and cheese is cr trash, so they're having uh, Christmas at Carlotta's. They're in a better place. Uh, Cassie. She acknowledges now that she wasted so much time with Z and Kalai said, yeah, it, 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 what, 15 years of your life? But Cassie said, better late than never. Better late than never. And so they're in a better place, but she has an issue because Cotton, of course, still hasn't forgiven her and who knows if she ever will. Remember, Cassie inadvertently killed High Hill. That's why the rift between her and Carlotta became even bigger than one it ever was before. <clears throat> but we'll see that they're going to need each other. They're going to need each other. Cassie decides that she wants to go and get dirt on Z so that she can go and take him down, take his money, do whatever she needs to do. She sneaks into his place, takes his uh, a hard drive that has all of his finances and all of his dirty schemes and 
before she leaves, we see what appears to be him and his wife, and he's saying how he lo he does that choking thing with all the women he knows. So that's his move, and he says that this sh she's the only woman that he's ever really loved, and Cassie almost put a clip in him and the wife, but she realized, you know what? That would be giving him the power. He is not worth it. And so I said, look at the growth. Look at the growth with Cassie. Now, aside from all of that, uh, we see later on that Cassie, like I said, her and Colada, they're in a better place. Uh, Cassie goes and visits Cotton, and Cotton's having some trouble with her son. And Cotton was actually got finished with doing the hair of one of her clients, and the client even wanted to go and pop her son, pop the son because he was he was doing too much. He was becoming a brat, and Cotton, you know, just doesn't really know how to handle all of that right now. And so then, Auntie Cassie came in and said, "Ah, go go upstairs. She's not going. Hey, take your butt upstairs, or, or else I'm going to follow you." <laughs> he goes runs uh, runs up those stairs, and it's a good example of how it really does take a village to raise a child. It does. It does. They're still not in the best of place, but they're going to build. How are they going to build? They're going to build through strife because we see towards the end of the episode, Cassie and Carlotta's father comes to, you know, comes to the house and tries to act like everything's normal. He has gifts for everyone. It's like, hey, happy Merry Christmas. I got presents. They're both looking at him like, dude, we know what you did. Why are you coming in here like it's all good? And then he goes and says, you know, you know, uh, I, I came here because uh, I, I, I have early stages of dementia. Early stages of dementia. So what he's really saying is, I'm not apologizing or acknowledging whatever I did. I'm actually coming here to say that I need your help. I need someone to take care of me. I need y'all to take care of me. And, you know, I don't even remember what I did in the past. That's what he was trying to do all in one statement. Trash trash the end of their saga concluded with uh cassie getting a call from z and z saying oh you took something of mine i took something of yours and it's a grandchild it is a nephew well, uh, cassie's nephew and carlotta's grandbaby so now it's on because remember this is we're only halfway through they're still holding on their half and i said oh cotton's gonna go off she's gonna go off i already know it I'm ready for that. I'm hyped for that. Oh, now let's talk about Alex. Alex is super stressed because now the solo stuff is going to be even worse due to the fact that we'll find out what happens with Star. I'll tell you what happens with Star. And so the pressure gets put on Alex. Um, she's stressing. She's not really handling it well. She actually goes and visits Miss Ruby and they have a cool conversation. Unfortunately, because of how the case is progressing, they're not going to move forward with R Miss Ruby's case. And that's disgusting because the rape kit, it wasn't the sexual assault kit. I guess no one ever processed it and it wasn't within a certain period of time. It was some stupid technicality. So Ruby is just like, okay. So her abuse is still going to be out there and she's just going to have to go and cope. You know, she has her medical marijuana, so she's going to take care of herself with that. Alex finally tells someone up front because she told Noah, but she tells Miss Ruby that she's been having these panic attacks and it's just one thing after the other after the other. And Miss Ruby said, you're strong. You'll get through this. And if you want, I'll even share some of the ganja with you. Alex said, no, that's not her thing. I'm thinking it's not your thing right now. Give it a couple of moments. And Alex, like I said, she's really stressed. And we later find out that now Alex has to take up the responsibility of being the main solo act. She has to be the main solo act because one after the other, some foolery commences. Um, so now it's her time to shine. Sink or swim. So she goes back to Miss Ruby's place. The she was trying to find the weed. That's when Derek comes along, and Derek had a conversation with Miss Ruby as well, because Miss Ruby's going to volunteer at the shelter, the local shelter or church or whatnot, to give out money, uh, give out food, and Derek talks to Alex and finally tells Alex the truth about how look, I'm sorry. Uh, the woman who you saw me kissing, that was an undercover, 
undercover agent. You know, I've been undercover myself because I've been trying to find out the guy or the person who went and assaulted my grandmother. And I had to keep it from you because that was a part of the deal. I'm so sorry. And, you know, Alex realized, okay, this actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> now looking back. And so they reconcile, which was important because Alex didn't want to go and leave Derek because Derek actually surprised her. He had a gun and Alex was able to get the gun away from him. That's when he told the truth and Alex had to hear some reality from him because she said, oh, I'm going to stay here with you. He said, no, here's what you're not going to do. You're strong. You worked really hard for this. You didn't want to be in your father's shadow, right? So this is your time to shine. You need to go and prove that you are Alex Crane, not your father's daughter, but your own person, your own woman. And that's the pep talk that she needed. She needed someone consistent and solid in her life to really just kind of shake her and say, hey, hey, remember who you really are and not what people tell you you are. And so Alex gets out there and I love her performance. She did the thing, thing, dang thing. She had a full performance. I, They performed most of the song. I said, wow, I like the blonde. I'm thinking, so how does this, how is black girl magic? Because Alex gets on here and gets the best blonde wig we've seen on this entire show, even though Star is supposed to be the blonde. Ugh! Ugh! Speaking of Star, remember, Star is pregnant. Star is pregnant, and... Actually, no, we're not going to go there. Let's go with Noah. Noah, his anxiety levels are better, but now he has to deal with something new. His father is hiding the fact that he's dating Miss Bruce from Noah and uh, Miss Bruce hates being someone's secret and he's over it and Noah catches them kind of having some weird interaction and Noah's like wait are you doing a thing and he saw the lie so then Noah said oh okay he doesn't know it's a lie at the time but later on he does find out and he's pissed because he's like I just need for you to tell me the truth. That is our issue. You don't tell me the truth. You don't confront things. You go and run away. That is my problem with you, period. So we'll stop there. Um, because Noah, he, there's some back and forth that has to do with Star. Um, so let's talk about Star. Star is supposed to have a solo. She, she's supposed to do her song, There Free Bees. Unfortunately, her song was actually a sample. And I, I can't even call it a sample because it sounds like apparently it was almost like a complete copy of someone else's song. Um, at least the beat. So she can't. She's being. Remember to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe and come back. Subpoenaed. She's being subpoenaed because she got caught off guard. I think it's Star. You of all people should know the trick of the trade. Star got caught up because at this industry party, uh, Jackson proposes to her, which throws her off guard. And that's when she gets subpoenaed. And it was actually Lil Dino. Lil Dino subpoenaed, subpoenaed her because he was upset at being embarrassed by her and the group. So that was his way of getting back at her. He was like, oh yeah, that's actually one of my dude's songs. I said, oh my gosh, Mateo, really Mateo? You're the one who greenlit this. Ugh. Uh, not Mateo, I'm sorry, Maurice. Maurice has been trashed this entire season. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, and I knew it, I knew it. He was gonna be a bad guy overall. So now Star can't do that song, and that's the song that everyone wants her to do, and it stresses her out. I thought that she was going to go into labor early, but that's what, that's not what causes her to go into labor. She's still trying to figure out this whole engagement thing, if she really wants that or not, and Jackson, his feelings are hurt because Star is just like, she doesn't feel like she wants to ruin what they have. What they have seems to be working. She doesn't want to have a label on her. She has never seen herself as someone's wife. Now that does change because uh, Star needs a song to perform. And Jackson, within the last hour, ninth hour, goes and tells Star, well, why don't you perform with Noah? He said it before, but he said it again and got Noah. And it was 
nights because it was like an olive branch. And that's when Star said, propose to me again. And while that was happening, she actually went to labor. But let's back up for a moment. Drea, who remember, she's supposed to be this like social media um, blogger. And she was interviewing take three. The interview was not going well because Drea kept her foot on Alex's neck. And Alex had a panic attack because Drea was just like, well, you know, and by the way, you were signed at 14 or 15 to your daddy's label and you got dropped because you couldn't come up with any good material. And now why should people give you a second chance when you fizzle down your first chance? I'm thinking, what type of interview is this? This is not an interview. This is a reading session. And first off, someone who's 14, it's going to be very different. When they're 14 and a half, 15, 16, 17. So for her to go and do all that, understand that maybe she wanted Alex to spin it. The ice queen, she'll spin it. But that was disgusting what she did. Uh, but anywho, Alex goes, in, Star goes into labor. And this is when we find out that Star gets rushed to, into, she, she wasn't at the hospital. They made it into the ambulance, I believe. And she gave birth. Everyone's face went from, oh my God, the baby, the beautiful light brown baby. <laughs> I'm so glad that they didn't do the whole thing of, well, you know, someone had some black or some, um, you know, Latino or something in them in their ancestry, in their lineage, and that's why the baby turned out like that. No, it's Noah's baby. <laughs> and Jackson's feelings were hurt. And so now we're at the hospital, and Star said she really didn't know. She was told the wrong date, so that's what she had to go off on. Her and Noah did sleep together on tour, like, once or twice. And my whole issue is, you're telling me, out of all the times that Star has gotten, had uh, sex, that now... Is the time she magically got pregnant. Now's the time she had slip ups. Okay. All right. This is a storyline. This is a storyline because she was pregnant in real life and there was no hiding that. So this is a storyline. And of course, because this is Star and this is supposed to be Ratchet, she didn't know who her baby father was. And now it's Noah. And Jackson wanted to hold the baby. I got nervous. I said, Excuse me? You want him to do what? Hold what? I don't think so. And he held the baby, but gave the baby back. And then later on, he told Star, look, I wanted to marry. I really thought the baby was mine. I thought the baby was going to be mine. I wanted to marry you. I wanted us to be a family. But now the baby isn't mine. I'm leaving, Star. Bye. I don't hate you. I know you didn't do it on purpose, but I can't be with you. And I said, that's fair enough, but dang <laughs> Oh, poor Star. Her worst nightmare is happening. That she was going to be a single mother. And that even though Noah's there, Noah's still a mess. Speaking of him being a mess, um, Noah leaves. And his father has to go and give him the pep talk. Because Noah said, again, he wasn't mad at his father for hiding the for being in their relationship. He likes Bruce. But he was upset about the lying. And he said... But he's really upset because he found out he's going to be a father and he just doesn't know like what's going to happen. And that's when his father had to tell him, hey, you're the polar opposite of me. That's how I know you're going to be a good father. That's how I know you're going to be an active father, a present father. You'll do great. That's all the encouragement that Noah needed. So now he goes, he's driving back to go and see his baby, to see Star. And all we hear is, Aah! but we know he got into an accident. I don't know if he actually hit anyone, but his car did roll off into the woods. I'm thinking, oh my God, he's alive, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, so that's kind of how the episode, and oh no, 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 no. Uh, while Miss Ruby was serving, Miss Ruby and Derek were there at the soup kitchen serving the people. She had the biscuits. She dropped the biscuits because she saw her assailant. She saw him and Derek realized, oh, that's him. Derek picked up that knife so fast. I said, I'm proud. Do it. 
do it, do it. You won't do it. But then I said, no, no, don't do it. No, no, don't go to jail. No, no, she needs you. So that's when she said, take her home. But she went back. She went back because she went to go and get something from her house. She saw the guy and she brought him food. He didn't realize it was her. And she, he started to eat the food. I said, oh, it's poisoned. Oh, it's poisoned. Yep, the food was poisoned and he died on the spot. She kicked him and then she threw away the food. And then what was she saying? What was she saying? Silent night. I think she was saying silent night. It was something eerie, but I loved it. I said, yes, revenge is a dish served cold and in some cases hot. <laughs> oh, but that's it. That's it. I loved it. That was a good mid-season finale, but we'll get back to the mess soon enough. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in 2019. We're not playing. I'm not playing.